Okay, so my A500 Mini arrived today. I've just um, received it, started to open it up, and thought I'd take a quick video showing what comes with it, and also a bit of gameplay around it as well. Um, whilst a lot of you might well know Raspberry Pi can emulate devices like the Amiga, um, I think this device will really come into its own and perhaps the ease of use and setting up, uh, there's probably very little configuration that needs to happen to make it work. Uh, as you can see, it's quite compact. Uh, it's from Retro Games and Clanto, I think, maybe own the rights to the ROM uh, kickstart. So um, that's probably why uh, their logo is there. So it just works out the box. Uh, it does say here you don't get an AC adapter, but you do get power, I think, with it. So you just need to get that USB cable they give you um, some power. Comes with a joypad, comes with a mouse, and obviously the main unit itself. Um, and 25 games packaged within it. So there's the range of the games that come on that. And as you can see in the corner, you can load your own games. Um, so I'll test that out as well. It sounds pretty straightforward. It's based on uh, WHD load format. So as long as um, the games you've got are in that format, it should work fine. Um, on the side, just let you know about the contents. So you get the mouse, the joypad, and the USB-C power cable, but not the adapter and an HDMI cable, and you can see the, the lens there, 1.8 meters. Um, it's well packaged, quite solid. Um, let's get in there. So there it is, there's the Amiga A500 Mini, um, protected by a bit of plastic here. And first thing, everyone seems to ask the keys, do they do anything? Well, no, they're just solidly molded. But they are, you know, they feel good quality. They're, they're not just sort of gonna snap off or anything, they're very firm. Um, but there's no functionality with them, so that's just as it comes. So there's the size of the actual A500. If I move this out of the way, put that here, you can kind of see comparison. If I put in, uh, but, but, but that's credit card size, so it gives you an idea of the width. I mean, obviously the measurements on the site anyway, but it is very compact. Then on the side here, you've got the floppy disk drive. That's not operational, but it is very uh, realistic looking, very good quality plastic around it. It feels solid. It doesn't feel very flaky at all. Um, little badge on the back, screw for the feet, and then on the back is where all the ports are. So you've got three USBs, um, HDMI and USB-C for the power. So the USBs would be keyboard, mouse, joypad, and um, or perhaps USB stick for the games. So got a good option there, three is a decent number to make sure you've got all your extras plugged in. And that's pretty much it as far as the unit goes. Like I said, I'll plug it in in a minute. Um, and that's the unit. So back to the box, the other parts you get are a manual. So 8500 manual here. I think it comes in a few languages. Gives you an outlay of uh, how to set it up, what to plug in how to manage it and also I think in here somewhere is um, a guide on the controllers and how to use the um, keyboard to bring up an on-screen keyboard if you don't have a physical one and there's more details on the site as well so do visit the retro game site I'll put a link in the description uh, then under that we've got those two sections there we've got mouse and joypad so if I open up the mouse one and take a look that's the end of the box there so in the mouse it follows the traditional style of the Amiga mouse, although I think it's a little bit smaller in keeping with the Mini. So there you have it, one mouse, USB. And uh, again, it feels very good quality, you know, good click and action. Nothing feels particularly fragile. I think that lasts well. And obviously, you know, the mouse is a great addition because loads of the Amiga games really benefit from one. So I think the fact that there's a mouse um, bundled in those, brilliant, as well as that joypad. So, oh, one more thing. In the mouse pack as well, you've also got the extension. So I guess that's the, the 1.8 metre um, extension in there. That you can add to the mouse, give you a bit of distance, depending on your setup. Then joypad. Open up that one. I think joypads came with a CD32 in the Amiga, but I never had one of those. So I think it might be loosely based on that type of joypad. So here it is, um, let's take that cover off. One second. Okay, so 
one joypad. Home and a menu button. Four buttons, a bit SNES-like, and you've also got the left and right bumpers there. Again, it feels good quality, it's no issue. You can see the sort of joypad moving in um, when you press any of those, but I don't think that's going to be any sort of issue. I'm sure they all play well. Just screws on the back, nothing special there, just those top two buttons. And again, I can't remember off the top of my head how many games really suit the joypad. I think I'll probably use the mouse and maybe a keyboard more, but I'll load up a few and see um, how they go. And I think that's about it. So there it is, Mega 500, pretty straightforward. Three USBs, HDMI and uh, USB power C. You need, obviously, the adapter. But other than that, it should just fire up and be a very straightforward way to play Amiga games. So I mean that you don't have to manage any configuration settings or set up a, a Pi or other device to emulate it. You can just get everything built in um, on this. So let's see how that goes. OK, I've taken a bit of a gamble here and I've just um, started recording the first time I've turned it on. Um, it did take me a couple of times because I didn't notice there's a little raised bumper next to the USB-C power um, input that turns it on or off so it doesn't just turn on when you put it in you just tap the um, button to the side of it to turn it on and off so I've plugged in a um, spare keyboard I've got as well as a mouse and a joypad that came with it so um, I'm on the screen now the mouse isn't active yet so you've got that kind of workbench traditional um, UI here looks really good. I'll just try the joypad because I presume that will. Yeah, there we go. I can choose my language with the joypad. Um, let's go for English because that'll help. OK, so it's not the B button. It's the A button. OK, A select. Yep, select. B next. Next. Um, so I think I read that obviously because a lot of Amiga games are more European based than anything else. All the TVs were typically 50 hertz. So is probably the best bet to choose in this. I mean, normally for a lot of emulation, you tend to go for 60, but in this case, I'll go 60. So as it says at the bottom, I'll read it this time. It says select, okay, press, and then run television. Te okay, that had a bit of a moment with the recording, but basically it just refreshed the screen. And um, if it's fine, you press yellow. So I will. And I'm in. So oh, there's a bit of music on the background there. It's quite relaxing. Um, okay, Alien Breed, another world. Okay, cool. So it's got a nice sort of UI to choose your games as you go along. Oh, and I can see under the description of the text, it tells you what controller will obviously work suitably with it. So I can see that's good for a, a joypad on Zool. I think Zool was the Amiga's attempt at trying to do a Sonic as a bit of a mascot. It really took off there. Worms, massively popular. Oh, it's got there. Joypad, mouse, any kind of more players. I don't know if that means you can just do it as joypad or just a mouse, or you need both. Probably just one or the other. Anyway. Um, Titus the Fox, never played that. Supercars, no, nope, don't remember that one. Swivel T, fantastic. I think I've probably played it more in the Amiga, but um, more in the Amiga, more in the Mega Drive, but I imagine extremely similar uh, experience on the Amiga. So I'm the sorcerer, so point and click one. So these sort of games like um, Monkey Island series as well. Obviously that really helps for a mouse and it's got the little icon there. Um, these are probably going to be really popular to replay. I'm just thinking now, looking at the pictures, I probably want to try and find where the CRT options like scan lines and that sort of thing are. Um, but yeah, so I'd, I'd be scrolling across these. So first thing I'd do, I'd just give something a quick go. So um, what would load in quick? Probably something like Zool. So let's give that a go. That should be just like up, down, left, right. Up. Did I miss it? Where's it go? There we go. So, right, so down the bottom says A, start game. Okay. Okay, loaded pretty quick. Um, it does look like it kind of needs some scan lines, but fire to start. I've got no idea what fire is. I'll have a guess. Using the joypad here. And as we've already seen, that was extremely simple to start playing an Amiga game. There was next to no configuration needed. Um, so that's a great setup if you're into these. Okay, left, right, I'm on the joypad here, obviously. Mouse is doing nothing, but that's fine. Um, okay, so yeah, that down, left, right, fire works fine. 
that's fire, that's jump, as well as up. Actually, all four buttons shoot except one, well, three buttons shoot, and that's jump. Okay, so shoot and jump. I'm not feeling any lag, I don't know what the exact lag um, might be on this, but it seems really responsive. This is a really colourful game. Um, can I get up there? Probably could if I was better at it. But the point is, it's easy to start playing. Um, how do we quit? So I've got menu button. Oh, okay, so the menu button brings on an on-screen uh, keyboard, in case you haven't got one handy, I suppose, and you need, just need to press a couple of keys maybe to get a game started. So that's quite handy on menu. What about the other one? Home. Ah, so home is a straight quit. I should probably read the manual to work out what the save game option is, but I know each game gives you um, four options. I think if I press down, like the icon says there, there we go. So I've got four save slots per game. Um, like I say, I'm sure in the manual it'll tell me which button to press or combo to save a slot. Um, now let's press menu at the bottom because it says options. So if I press menu on the joypad, right, okay, so let's have a look at display options. Fixed size, moderate zoom, screen fit, and it's got the description at the bottom. They say screen fit and um, stretches. I probably go moderate zoom, maybe. They don't necessarily have a recommendation, it's whatever seats, I guess. And that's what I want CRT effect, enable scan line. So if we turn that on and close that, close that, go back to Zool, can we see a difference? Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I think I'd definitely go with scan lines. Um, obviously, it's just personal preference, but I think that works well. Prepare yourself. Maybe I can get further nice scan lines around. I'm sure that'll help. Or. No, how did I do that spin? Press and hold that one. There we go. Yeah, the fact I'm just thinking now to the, the way it's quick and easy to set up, and the actual unit looks the part, so it's a really good uh, sort of retro piece of kit, and, and so much that it's just not you know, standard. Um, Sort of single board or anything, you know, they've gone to a lot of effort making sure that it um, looks like an Amiga 500 and it's really solid, doesn't feel cheap. Um, and yeah, it was easy to up and running. Plus, the, um, you've got all the WHD options, which I'll try out in a second. So I've had enough of that. I'm going to press home. Oh, I should have worked out what save was. Anyway, um, yeah, plenty of games. Uh, down at the bottom, I can favorite some, I can sort them. What's sort look like? By author, by genre, by year. Okay. Publisher by favorite by title. There's a lot of sort of options. Um, I can start the game. I can favorite it. Right, let's just do that. Let's favorite a good game. I suppose Alien Breed's pretty good. Uh, Worm, Sun and Sorcerer. Let's go Chaos Engine. Right, so favorite X. Hmm. I heard it go boop, but I don't know what. Where is it? Mark that. Oh, so X is giving it number of stars. Look, it's going one, two, three, four. That's a four star game. There we go. So I can um, sort by favorites, I guess. And I guess that disc icon next to it means you can save it and you've got four blobs next to it probably showing which or how many saves you've got on that game. Um, so press up for help. Oh, that's handy. So it gives you the mapping that they've applied to the game. On the joypad there. I suppose most of these games work with the joystick, so the joypad's the same thing really, isn't it? Just a different form factor. Um, what else we got? Save games press down. Yep, we know that. Uh, X lock, unlock, and A load, and B close. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I think that's so. That's pretty much it in terms of what you boot into. You get the interface straight up. You get to choose your game. You can start your game. You can set. Oh, let's go back to those options. So if we go menu, yeah, display option. Oh, no, wrong button. Hang on. Menu, display options, fixed size, moderate zoom, screen fit. Um, I mean, you can see the description and the change that it would probably do there, so that's just pick your preference, really. Um, enable image smoothing. Smooths the image to look less blocky on a large screen. Fair enough. Um, okay, so if we close that one, then we've got system options. What have we got here? 
my sensitivity, music volume, fine, power LED. So on the actual 500, I can see now it's got a red light on to show you it's on. So it switches the LED from always on to normal Amiga behavior. So I've got the option to flip that. I wonder if it do it immediately. No, it's still red at the moment. If I uh, close that, is it any different? No, but yeah, you can play about with that to change the LED anyway. So I'll keep it as it was. Language, okay, so you can change it to one of six languages. Advanced options, TV settings, 50 hertz. Yeah, so this is where it would just drop out for a second if I change that to um, make sure your TV's happy. But this one seems happy. I guess most modern TVs can do 50. Enable this option if your TV can display a full 720 without cropping. I don't know, maybe. I'm all right though, I'll leave that. Um, uh, system info. Okay, so that must be uh, that's specific to this machine or this build or something on that. Legal notes is factory reset. We don't really need those. So we will quit that and go to shut. No, I won't go down to shutdown device. Right, back again. There we go. So yeah, that was me pressing menu on the joypad. If I press home here, oh, what's that there? That takes me back to the game I was last in, playing a second ago. So kind of like an auto save. And whilst I'm here, I can work out without reading a manual what the save button is. Ooh, sweet. Keep coming. Anyway. I'm pressing all types of buttons. I can see the top of the screen is cropped a little bit as well, actually. I should probably change this. Yeah, I should bring it in a bit. I shouldn't have that full screen just to make sure I can get all of it in. Um, menu? No, no, I don't think menu. I'll read the manual. Um, I'm going to grab the manual and see if it's easy to work out. Otherwise, I'll read the proper manual uh, that's on their website, which I will put a link to. Seizures? No. Electric shock? No. Repetitive motion injuries? No. Unpacking? Done that. Initial setup? Done. Gamepad? Buttons on the gamepad? No, I don't see how to save on this. It must be another... I'm sure it's straightforward though. Um, just glancing through that. Nope. Okay. I will check it out later. I'll put it in the description, but I'm sure it's straightforward. Because there's only so many buttons. It's, it's none of those. I pressed home to get back. I pressed down and it's not appearing. Ah, anyway. Right, next thing, let's see how to load our own game. So we've got the default 25, which are all pretty good games here. I'd probably give Simon the Sorcerer a go. Um, Chaos Engine, definitely. Speedball, definitely. Another World's great. Pinball Dreams, Kick Off 2. Um, okay, so what I will do, I'm going to see if it works. If I unplug whilst this was switched on the keyboard, because I haven't had to press that. I've just used that on the screen one. So that's now unplugged. And somewhere I've got a USB, which I've got here plug that USB in and then I'll try and right quickly stare at the TV again has anything appeared no but I did hear a pop what was that let's have a look ooh USB's appeared so on the retro games website they've got a page that um, has kind of their config to make the USB valid or that the Mega 500 mini will play so you just copy those files across to the root. Um, if I open this, so looking at the instructions again, it says start game. Well, it's a USB stick, well, I'll press it anyway. Here we go. So this is the folder here that it asked to copy across. So I did. So that's just sitting there. Um, system volume information, maybe that was just left on the stick and I didn't clear it up properly. I don't know whether it just sees that, I don't know, but it's probably not relevant. And you can see down the bottom, it says LHA, because that's the format that the files need to be in for this WHD load. So I put a couple in games folder, I created a games folder and put that in. So if I go into the games folder, I can see the files that ended on a PC anyway with .lha, which is probably where they're showing up here. Now whether they work or not, I don't know. So these are games I've had from way back in the day that I've got the boxes for somewhere in the back of the cupboard. And I just grabbed the WHD version of them. So if we go for, maybe let's try Canon Follow, so I can try the mouse. I don't know if this will load, but let's give it a go. So it says A select, press that. Oh, now down the bottom it says Canon Follow. I can either press Game Settings or press Home to start the game. I'll press Menu to Game Settings. 
Okay, so I can tweak the video output of this game when it loads. Joystick port 1 is mouse. Yeah, that's what I want. So I'd want then joystick port 2 would be joystick or CD32 pad. And I can map the gamepad over there, look. So if I press A, select there, I could say, I could edit that. I'm not going to, but I can press A and edit those buttons. That's it's good actually. On every screen at the bottom, they say like, they remind you what buttons you're supposed to be pressing to navigate the different menus. So that's really useful. But let's see if the defaults work okay. So if I go back from there, and then it says to play that, I should press home. So again, I use the joypad to press home. Let's see if anything happens. I've got a black screen at the minute. Still a black screen. Don't know if I should press something. Oh, hang on. Something flashed. I thought about something. Hey, we're in. There we go. Okay, right. So now I'm just going to go to the mouse and click. And I think it recognised that. So I hit a. There we go. And there's my mouse. And I think we saw in that previous screen I could adjust the sensitivity, but it was about right. It's certainly quite responsive. It doesn't. F I mean, obviously, it's a modern take on a mouse, so it's much better than they were. Um, okay, so how do I remember? Do you have to select players? No, you just press start. I think, can't you start these games by just choosing the people you want to take into battle? I can't remember. Anyway, let's see. And it's still got the scan lines applied from that previous setting, which is what I want anyway. So, okay, go for it. Um, okay, so I'm down here. That right mouse is shooting. Left mouse is moving. And that's pretty much all I should need, isn't it? So I've got left mouse move and then right mouse shoot. So if we go up here. Nice. And I would happily continue because it's a good game. It's a great game. But this is just a video. So, um, quit home. Oh, yeah, home immediately quits. Oh, in the top right now, it says, yeah, so it says home. I can jump straight back to it. Okay, so if I jump straight back to it with home. Sometimes if I press menu here, I get the on-screen keyboard. Um, really should read what saves games. Anyway, so I suppose a, it's fair to quit the game with home. Okay, so let's go back to the stick with A. And let's try... What else have we got? Uh, maybe... Let's give Lemmings a go. So again, it's an LHA file, I press A, and it is selected down the bottom, and I want to start that, so I'm going to press home. Oh, this is loading quicker. Maybe it's a smaller game or something, I don't know. Um, skipping, no, I'm all right, yeah, fun. Um, oh, I didn't touch anything. It's just doing its thing. There we go. Whilst that's there, I'm going to quickly see if I can find the file that says how you save games. Okay, I think I read the manual. Right, so let's say I want to save the game here, which makes no sense, but I'll try it anyway. So you press home to go back to that screen. You've got a suspended game in the corner, top right, so you see I'm in the middle of Lemmings. Then it says, and I don't know if it's going to work on these WHD games, but it says press down, 
and then to save, if I just read the screen, maybe it's got a flash in A. So yeah, I press A and it puts it in the slot. I'll save the game. Um, if I close that, now I imagine I could open the game. If I go, oh, no, back, blah, blah, blah. press down and then load X. Oh no, that's locked. Should A, load, right, loading. There we go. And there we go. So that was pretty straightforward. Although it looks like on the face of it, unless I've missed something, if you go for your WHD load, games all of your games are going to be limited to those four slots still because it just thinks they're effectively all that usb icon um, whereas the other games will get four slots each that come with the a500 mini but yeah so, so uh, just oh here we go my mouse is fine one player um just dig i didn't play this much back in the day i'm not sure i so got to sign it right so i need I, I click him Oh no, I choose what I wanted to do. So I want to digger that one. I'll have, whoa, what have I pressed? Is that pause? Let's get him to dig down. There we go. And then what else can I do? I can explode everyone. I can get people to stop moving. So, oh no, I can't because I've got zero of them. I've got nine people who can dig down. Dig down. I get it. And now they're going to go home. Well, that was easy. There we go. Okay, so let's quit that by pressing home. And I suppose you just choose not to save it. It just sort of sits at the top there. Um, what else do I have on the stick? Speedball 2, Chaos Engine. Let's fire that up. Oh, Gene 2. I do want to play that. That was fantastic. But, yeah, Chaos Engine here. Um, I start the game, press home. See how long that one takes to load. They're pretty quick. I'd have to compare what it's like on the um, uh, Pi when it runs an emulator like Amiberry, but I think from other videos I've seen, much more comprehensive videos than this one is, um, where they really do a full-on teardown, this A500 Mini is typically quicker at loading games than they're on a Pi. I don't know which Pi they use, that's probably a factor, but it's still probably pretty nippy. I mean, this doesn't take long at all. Click. I think the scan lines did a pretty good job actually. They're fairly well, they're not too dark. Loading. And this is the AGA version as well, so it's slightly more, um, it's probably bigger in file size than the standard A500 one. Uh, start new game, yes, please. Um, and oh, yeah, we we'll have those two people. Is this going to work with the joypad or the mice? Joypad, right? Come on. Right, yeah, there we go. That's shoot. That's go up for some reason. That's do nothing. So it's just one button, right? Up, down, left, right, fire. Is that good? Probably good. The joypad, because this one particularly, I'm using the D-pad heavily to sort of get the direction. It does feel very responsive and it is doing exactly what I want in the right direction. So I'd say the quality seems pretty good. I mean, I've, I've only played it for like all of about 30 seconds, but I'm not having any problems with that. Oh, oh, oh. Keys. Yeah, no, it's good. Right, okay, so home, quit. Um, yeah, I think that's that must be pretty much the main bits. And what I'm taking away from this is very easy to set up, very easy to start playing, very easy to add your own games. And the save function is pretty good as well. Perhaps limiting on this, unless I'm missing something, it looks like you can only have four slots on um, the um, USB stick. And... Now I'm wondering, when I press down, why don't I see that one I did save on, was it Lemmings? Or, oh, perhaps I needed to lock it, or perhaps I need not to have this one running at the moment. I've got that suspended game. How do I unsuspend a game? No, probably not like that. Did I save it on that? I can't remember what I saved it on now. It 
was it? I mean, Lemmings included on this as well. It's a bit daft me putting Chaos Engine and Lemmings, given they've already with the game. Or maybe Lemmings doesn't come with this? No, Lemmings doesn't. Right, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to open Alien Breed. This is the most inefficient video ever, obviously, by the way. I mean, I'm just turning this on for the first time, trying to work out everything. I should probably do that first, then do a video. But there we go. So I want to save it, and I'm looking at the manual. It says, if there is currently a suspended game, the miniaturized suspended game will move down and hover above the first available save game slot. So I press home, and press down, and then it will hover. And it says either the first blank slot or otherwise the first unlock slot. Pressing left and right will move it to another slot. Yes, it does. Press A to save the game in the chosen slot. This will not overwrite any game already in that slot. If a slot has been locked, you will not be able to save the game into that slot. Right, okay. So anyway, I want to save it. So A, save. There. Um, now if I close that, then go down again, it's still there. Okay. And if I start playing another game, Blah, 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 blah. There we go, and I'll go back. I go no, actually, I want to play Alien Breed. Yeah, it is there. So yeah, I don't know what I was doing before, but anyway, yeah, they they saved that, and I could load that by pressing A, and I'll be back in Alien Breed. There we go. Um, so yeah, back to what I was saying. It's basically um, it's a quick plug and play, um, and it, what it does, it does really well. Um, it's got good set of options for TV and video output to make sure. You can play it in the right format that you want to. Um, it's not sort of overwhelming you with options that you don't need. It, and because you can put your own particular games on there, it's going to be um, a fantastic retro device for um, the games that you want to play. So um, anything that you put on your stick there, obviously you want to own the originals, but you can download the WHD versions and really quick and easy to load. Um, it comes with the joypad, which is working really well for me and the mouse. They both give a great experience. Um, I definitely recommend this. I um, only played it for like five minutes as you've seen, but it's doing everything that I think I want it to. Um, just to make sure it is worth buying, let's make sure it can load Secret of Monkey Island, because um, that's something I absolutely should be able to do. Let's check it. Oh, Amy Berry WHD laid auto beta. So obviously Amy Berry is involved in this in the bit as well. There we go, Secret Monkey Island. I'm sure when I had this, it was 12 floppy disks. This is a lot easier. Come on, black screen. Maybe it takes a while to load 12 floppy disks. Come on. Well, I guess cannon fodder took a minute. I'll have a bit of patience. Oh, and um, whilst we're waiting for that, do check out their website to get the manual because this goes in a lot more detail than the one that's in the box has got. Um, a lot of pages, about 40 pages, covering just about every option there. So that is pretty comprehensive. And as well, it gives you those that folder, that A500 folder for the WHD load games. Um, so you'll need that to to bring your own, obviously. But yeah, the manuals, the PDF manual is pretty good. They're pretty thorough. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what's happened to this one. Maybe it's still loading in the background. Uh, oh, uh, I quit it because I press home. Let's go back to that by pressing home. I'm sure mashing the keys doesn't really help it. Maybe the format that I got this one in isn't quite right. Or maybe it takes slightly longer to load. But um, I don't think more black screen will make the best video. So I think I'll stop it there. But um yeah you get the idea any questions on it please put it in the comments and i'll um i'll let you know if you need uh, any particular options checking or anything like that but now i think great little device very happy i bought this one and as always thanks very much for watching